Welcome. How do people truly shift and truly change in their lives? They create an internal visualization of that life that they want to step into. They then back that up with a biological emotional footprint of that creation, of that visualization. They then take that and they embed that into the geographical landscape of their brain. They come along then to support that memory and they smother their mind and their body in this new emotion of what it is that they want to create for themselves. They then take that and they place that as a blueprint into the quantum field of all infinite potential and they wait patiently for the field to respond to that intention. In other words, they get very, very clear emotionally by feeling this new future that they want to step into and they get very clear in their thought process combining that together and then these are the people that tell us that after a period of time they just feel that shift that something has changed for them but it's also time to go deeper so for that reason we created a process called a quantum affirmation collapse process and we're going to walk you through that now so just bear with me and follow me to the board as we go through all of this first off know this 25% of your cortex, which is where you are, it's the one thing that separates us from primates, separates us from other creatures and animals on the planet. Our cortex is you, it's your identity. And 25% of your cortex is built up of what's called inhibitory neurons. Inhibitory neurons is really the part of the brain that the left brain uses. Now you have two brains inside one skull and you're not neurologically hardwired to accept this, but here's the reality and here's the truth. The left brain deals with what we call certainty. Certainty is what is familiar, what it knows, while the right brain is more about opportunity. And the right brain sees and knows that there's more out there, there's greater opportunity while the left brain lives in certainty. So the left brain, for example, would rather that you live in your current pain, would rather that you live in your current difficulties because the current pain and the current difficulty, it has survived that in the past and as far as it's concerned, it will survive it in the future. But your opportunistic brain, your right brain, that's where all the glory is. That's where all the dreaming can take place. That's where opportunity lives and it takes a conglomerate, a picture, a snapshot of everything that's going on in your life through the senses in your body and it brings them inside itself and it brings them in in the form of a Lego set and that Lego set will sit there and from that Lego set everything that you want in your life can be built. That Lego set then in the form of messages is sent into the left brain analytical. Now the left brain then lives in certainty so it designs your life in a linear fashion from past to future. And in doing that, it looks for a blueprint. So the right brain says, we have all of this opportunity over here. Let me send you all of these different things that you can do with your life. The left brain says, well, thank you for all of these opportunities. And now I'm going to put the Lego set together, but I'm going to build a Lego set with a blueprint of your past life. And we call that the repetitiveness of our own difficulties. So if you wonder why people live in the repetitiveness of difficulty, it's because left brain would rather live in pain than take the glory of the new. So it doesn't know new. So in going deeper, we have a process called a quantum affirmation collapse process. And this process is life-changing. The way the process works is, if the left brain is living in the pain of the past, and the pain of the past is based on its past experiences, so what you have experienced in your past. And the left brain would rather live in the pain of certainty than live in the glory of opportunity. Well, this blueprint that the left brain uses to build your life is based on past perceptions. The left brain, part of its survival mechanism is this. It knows that in the past, when you had a difficulty in school, with your parents, with a belief growing up, whatever that it was. If you grew up in a broke environment where money doesn't grow on trees, we don't have the money for that. You'll never get rich. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. Your dad doesn't like you that much. Your school teacher told you that you're not that good. All of these left those impressions. And while we were experiencing negativity growing up, the survival brain activated while you were growing up and it learned to deal with a difficulty. So in dealing with the difficulty, it learns its survival traits. This is the exact left brain that you're relying on because it is your brain that determines your tomorrow. 
This brain has used the negativity of past experiences to build its survival mechanism. And therefore, the left brain then can reach down deep into your super subconscious brain. And it can tell the super subconscious brain to subconsciously repeat the past negative cycles to ensure that you do not forget your qualities and your strengths that you developed as part of your negativity. In other words, whatever was the most negative trait of your morning influencer, those people that raised you, your school teacher, somebody who had a very strong negative influence in your life, your parent, your mom, dad, whoever that was for you, the super subconscious brain will take an instruction from your awakened brain subconsciously to ensure that the pain that you grew up with, you marry it in the future. And I'm using marry as just a overtone to describe how we make sure subconsciously that we keep bumping into the same pain people that we wished we'd escaped from and escaped from when we were growing up. That is how the left brain subconsciously ensures that we continue to live in pain. So if you feel that your life has been the same, that the difficulty that you have, you keep trying to escape that difficulty, but for some reason you can't escape it. Well, the quantum affirmation collapse process allows you to literally search into that blueprint that has designed your life, that designs your tomorrow, and to break away from the subconscious biological and neurological difficulties and associations of those past events, to flip that past event upside down, and in other words, to allow your brain and body to disconnect from the belief that it needs to keep living with the pain and it creates then what's called gain. So now, I'll go through that process with you. We'll do it over the next series of videos. Make sure that you've got your pen and paper ready. So just know this, the left brain wants to make sure that you keep living in your pain, that you marry whatever that was, that negative part of you, that negative trait of you. To do that, the left brain, when it's designing your future, it sends a message and a message of survival into the deep, deep super subconscious brain to build your future. And that is how the brain works. So in other words, those 25% of inhibitory neurons are designed to do one thing, keep you stuck. What you're gonna learn is, as we go through this, is that the body is the driver of your future because the body it is the one that becomes addicted to the negativity of the pain. So in other words, the body is happy to live in pain. Now, you might dispute that for a moment, but just before we move on to the next session, let me just explain to you. Let's say for example, you have a drug addict and the drug addict makes a determination. They want to escape from their pain. They want to escape from their difficulty. So they make a declaration to the universe, to the world, to themselves, to their friends, to their families. I'm going to give up my drug. But two days later, their body is lying on the couch in pain, in sweat, in difficulty, doing everything that it can to get that brain to go back to the past, to go and buy that hit, to take that drug, to give up that dream. So the dreaming brain is no longer in charge. Instead, the emotional addicted body is the one that's in charge. And the quantum affirmation collapse process eliminates all of that. Welcome to this series. See you in the next video.